if the Democrats want to have a chance to win back these voters, what they're going to need to do is they're going to have to stop being the smartest and most intellectual people in the room. Now, you brought up Kyle Kalinske, and this is the reason why you brought him up. I find him smart. I find him good, you know, but he'll say some things that irritate me. Uh, Pod Save America, love the show, but they'll say things that irritate me. Sam Cedar, uh, Emma, his um, his his counterpart there, like the show. They say things that irritate me. Even John Stewart has been saying things that irritate me. The list goes on and on. And the reason why they irritate me is because as much as they wanted Kamala Harris to win or the Democrats, or they wanted to make sure that Donald Trump didn't, they still had to be the intellectuals. They still had to point out why Joe Biden did this or Kamala Harris's stance on Gaza or this and that. I get it. I get that you don't want to compromise your your intellect and you want to let people know, hey, I just want to let people know, even though I don't like Donald Trump, I still don't like that this has happened. Great. I get it. But right now, we're not in those times anymore. I'm sorry. So unless you get your act together, like they have, unless you start getting together and coming up with talking points and bullet points to talk about every day, and you start coming up with together, how to deflect the talking points that the right paints and makes about you on a daily basis. That's why you lost this election. It has nothing to do with Kamala Harris. It has nothing to do with her campaign. It doesn't even have anything to do with Joe Biden. I don't want to hear that. It has nothing to do with Joe Biden. It has nothing to do with Gaza. It has nothing to do with any of that. The reason why you lost this campaign is because you allowed for years and years and years and years for them to create the narrative of who you are and you did not defend it properly. You are too afraid maybe to defend part of it. And those days are gone. They're done. You can defend. You can even still defend your position on something, but say that it is not something that we are focusing on to make egg prices lower or to gas prices. If you're asked about transgender, you could say, look, what our stances on transgenders that we see a lot of transgenders in this country who are being bullied. I also hear that the transgender community, the number one, uh, the number one source of death for the transgender community is suicide. You know, me as a parent, I'm not a parent, but the lawmaker or whoever, if they are a parent can say me as a parent, I feel pretty queasy about that. I feel queasy about, um, regardless of whether I got along with my kid or not, whether or not my kid was transgender, gay, Christian, uh, a 76ers fan, if you're a Celtics fan like me, whatever. If I came home and they were hanging from the ceiling, I have sympathy towards that. I have sympathy towards other parents that I don't want that to happen. But at the same time, there's not a whole bunch of transgender people out there. So I'm just trying to say that yes, we care about the human aspect of it, but overall, we care about all American people and we want to work for the American people. That's what we need to do. I don't need rants for an hour. I don't need full clips about your stance on Gaza anymore. Just don't need it. Don't want to hear it because you're even trying to make it sound like Kamala Harris might not even be good for Gaza. So if you're confusing because I've been on this show long enough, and I got a small show. I've been on this show long enough, though, to know that some people on the right watch this show, not for a long time, but they watch it for periods at a time. And if it's happening on my show, I know for a fact it's happening in droves on their shows. And if you give them an inch, or you give somebody that's confused and is trying to learn both sides, if you give them an inch, When now we're going up against somebody that wants an authoritarian regime, who wants a fascist government that you keep reporting all the time on your show, you keep reporting that you want this fascist regime, but we're still going to say why Pete Buttigieg shouldn't have said this, or Kamala Harris shouldn't have said this, Joe Biden did this again. 
Days are over. They have to be. Time to get on the same page. I made a joke not that long ago on the show, maybe three or four months ago, that maybe it's time for the left to start their own cult. And when I say cult, I mean that in a joking manner because anybody who's intelligent can't get in a cult. But it, metaphorically, time to get form your own cult because we are smart enough to deflect the ridiculousness. We are smart enough to come up with talking points. And guess what? All of our talking points are going to be true and they're going to be facts. But we got to present them a way where we hammer it into people's heads. Do you know where I go I, I, as my job? I'm a mortgage loan officer, which right now it sucks. And it's going to suck for a long time now with this new administration, at least according to reports. But again, I've asked MAGA, I've challenged. If you don't mind, please, let's um, show me and tell me how we're going to get um, we're, we're going to get the interest rates down. But anyway, long story short, I go in and I speak to real estate agents. And do you know what I do almost every time? I repeat some of the things over and over and over and over again. Because if you say it once, twice, it's not going to stick with them. But if you continue to repeat things over and over and over again, it's going to stick. That's not a magical formula. That's human nature. Why do you think when you go for tests, you study? You don't just read something and go, I got it. Because everybody passed tests if they do that. You got to read it over and over and over again until it sticks. That's what we got to do over and over and over again until it sticks. Stop trying to be the smart person. Who gives a shit? I, I mean, that, that that's so frustrating for me. I even hear it on people like Pod Save America. Well, you know, I think they got away from the working class. What the fuck are you talking about? Joe Biden is one of the best working class presidents that we've seen in our lifetime. What are you talking about? He's the most pro-union president. He's going, he's he's trying to eliminate student loan debt, which he did to some extent, not to the extent that he wanted to, because what he tried to do was overturned by courts. That he's not for the working class. He's trying to get these junk fees and all these things removed. This is all stuff that it impacts the working class. Why? Because he doesn't have the magic wand to control inflation? Nobody does. But I'll tell you one thing, this country handled inflation better than every other country that was affected by COVID. Not even close. We're the envy of the world on the way we handled COVID. He's not for the working class. I'm saying this after the election. What? Are you insane? That just drives me nuts. And these are smart people. These are smart people. But what do they, I don't understand. Do they want to give some inches here to, to the Trump side, to the MAGA side? What for? You're not even telling the truth. You're lying. Or either that or you don't understand. And that concerns me. I don't know. I don't know.